computer. I'm gonna try to get my friend Ben to like make me a little sound bite intro, like a little 10 seconds where it's like, be da be da boo, happy Tuesday. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. That's that's all it's gonna be like be da be da boo. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> Hopefully next Tuesday. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. Uh, I guess welcome, welcome to Taboo Tuesday. This episode is on pelvic floor health, midwives, and witches. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Um, and with me here, I have Sarah. Um, I met her doing during the Make Moves mentorship. Uh, she's a chiropractor and acupuncturist, and knows a bunch of really cool stuff. And she came to, came to me. Um, well, actually, we were just talking about pelvic floor health. Um, and women's health in general and all the taboos related to that. And we just kept on talking and talking and talking. And I was like, hey, let's have an episode on this. Um, so you're welcome to introduce yourself a little bit more. I know you're more than just a chiropractor and acupuncturist. <laughs> so by name, I'm a chiropractor and I'm an acupuncturist and I'm also an herbalist. Um, I think a lot of times when people hear chiropractor, they have one very specific idea of what that means, but I really see myself as a musculoskeletal therapist um, with a, a primary focus on the, the core, uh, the diaphragm, and the pelvic floor. And so I'm really passionate about helping individuals um, become empowered on their health journey and also learn how to like reconnect to this area of the body, which very fre frequently gets under observed, under diagnosed, and under cared for. Um, and as an acupuncturist and as an herbalist, I treat m a variety of different things, um, ranging from pain to anxiety uh, to skin conditions, but also with a fundamental um, uh, stone of gynecological conditions as well. That is fascinating. <laughs> and um, if that interests you at all, you can follow Sarah on Instagram. What's your handle again? Is it just your name? Yep, it's Sarah Scrivano, DC, LAC. Awesome. Yeah, so give her a follow. Um, all right, so let's jump into it. We're going to start with the history of women's health, um, getting into witches and midwives a little bit. Um, and I'll add some resources. There's two really, really good videos that Sarah sent me. Um, if you're interested in diving into this even more, it's really, really fascinating. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about the history of witches and midwives? So I would say that this history dates back to um, particularly around the, the Middle Ages with regards to like Western, Westernized culture, um, where frequently women were the ones who were responsible for delivering delivering babies and and it was women of course who had an understanding of how women's bodies worked however at that time women were not typically in medicine they were not scholars they did not most of them probably did not know how to read um and so the people that were actually doing this work had learned from you know their family history and they were able to identify herbal medicine and and learn how to use it and apply it and um they were the ones that were actually treating women in women's conditions mm -hmm. um during that time there was also significant amounts of repression and control and so individuals who had sovereignty and agency over the over their bodies as women became blasphemized essentially and so these individuals who had this knowledge and who had this skill were ostracized as being witches and practicing witchcraft and so this caused um, a, a label on individuals who had this knowledge that they were evil, that they were bad, that they were, they were um, working with the devil and, and were, you know, feeding demons and um, that ended up contributing to even more repression 
on uh, on women and women's bodies, which unfortunately I think that we still see to some degree today. Um, the whole field of women's health, while it's definitely much more recognized and people are having certain conversations, it still tends to kind of get swept under the rug and make people feel uncomfortable. Um, and there is an element of shame that's still present. Um, and so I think that this goes far back in our, in our history, but I think that if we look at um, how, how it evolved out of that time period, we can really see uh, a clear parallel to why things are the way they are within uh, women's health and, and gynecology and obstetrics today. Definitely. Yeah. Like, especially what you said about having such a male dominated field. And then when women are starting to learn about their bodies, learn how to help each other, it's just that another layer of repression saying like, oh, that's evil. You can't, you can't learn about your body. And then also the other thing that was present in the middle ages that is still present today where men look at women and they're like, oh, you're attractive. That that's not good. And I'm going to blame you because I'm attracted to something. That's just like, very, very unsettling. And, and we all know that there is, that's still present at some level in our society today. And that's not anything that is the fault of women um, in any way. Um, I definitely think we see that um, with like dress codes in school, how, you know, young girls are, are blamed um, that they can't, show their skin because it's too distracting you can't wear you can't wear a tank top yeah like like it's my shoulders distracting. are covered so like i'm being modest but you're not being modest right now your shoulders are so distracting i'm it's not like, i'm <laughs> i'm distracting right now it's ridiculous and then and then getting to another another facet that we've talked about a lot that fascinates me so much that i didn't even realize before i started talking to you was that anatomically when we look at skeleton like skeleton models um the pelvis of a woman and a man are different. And I think somewhere in there, I probably learned something about that. But even in my yoga teacher training, when I was learning about anatomy, they had a skeleton there. And they didn't mention the fact that this is a male skeleton. This is a male pelvis versus a female pelvis. Um, and that changes so much. And then you were telling me even more about the, the anatomy of our pelvis and how it's named and all the implications with that. Right, so I actually found this out fairly recently myself. I didn't learn this in school. This was kind of through continuing education. Um, there is a, uh, a nerve artery and vein that exists in our pelvic cavity that innervates um, the perineal area, pelvic floor, and some of the superficial structures of that area. It's called the pudendal nerve. Um, it's most commonly associated with um, when you are like sitting on a toilet and your butt goes numb, that's like the <laughs> pudendal nerve. Been there. <laughs> uh, we've all been there. Um, so I just learned recently that pudendal is translated to to be ashamed. So even in anatomy, this very um, scholarly, static kind of science we see these elements of, of repression that are, that we've actually named parts of the body in that, in that image. Um, and then the, the bones of the pelvis too. Um, can I show my- I have your model there. I would love to see it. That's so helpful when it comes to learning these things. <laughs> Fine model. Dr. Sarah. <laughs> and it is a, I believe it's a male spine. Um, as we were saying, mm -hmm. most of them are, unless you have to, unless you buy a specialized pelvic model uh, for like gynecology. Um, and you can usually tell because the pubic angle here is less than 90 degrees. And then the, um, the bowl, the pelvic bowl, it's hard to tell in here, but usually it's a little wider in, in females because 
females' bodies are uh, designed to have babies. Yeah. Um, so this bone right here, this whole piece is actually separated into three bones. Um, the ischium, the ilium, and the pubis. But it fuses um, over time as you get older and the whole piece is called the inanimate, which translates to no name. So this whole structure here, they just, you know, wasn't important. Doesn't have a name. And it and if um I'm correct, do the bones in the male pelvis have different names then? And they're just entirely different. Nope, they're the same. Nope. And okay. the the oh. nerves the nerves in the, the pudendal nerve is the pudendal nerve in the male too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, they just have all these weird, shameful terms because we're not comfortable talking about our pelvis and its structure and what it does. Exactly. Um, we're at about 10 minutes now. There's so many more things wow. I want to talk to you about. <laughs> that just flew by. It really um, did. <laughs> we, just to like throw out some other things, we're probably going to do another episode together because this just fascinates me. Um, we've talked about, uh, there's a whole other TED Talk that we haven't really even gotten into. Um, that Sarah sent me that talks about uh, being a mother and learning about postpartum care um, and what happens to our bodies uh, when after we're pregnant, essentially, um, and how that care for mothers after birth is very, very lacking. Um, and I think the last thing that I'm I'm gonna say, at least, um, looking at my notes here, I guess two things. I can't just say one. <laughs> Um, two really big takeaways <laughs> leading into hopefully another another episode here. Um, basically, uh, in this TED Talk, another Sarah, <laughs> she says that we need to realize that women's health issues are human health issues. Um, and even like we've talked about the term women's health issues versus health issues, like we don't, I mean, I guess we do say men's health issues as well. Um, but just like normalizing these things. Um, and then, and then lastly, uh, research shows that if we don't ask patients about these issues, a lot of issues um, related to postpartum care, they're likely to be too embarrassed to tell us. So that again brings me back to vulnerability and honesty and openness. Um, and that shame and connection and vulnerability are kind of like, you know, they don't, they're not friends. <laughs> um, so again, that's, that's the goal of these Taboo Tuesdays to, to start normalizing these conversations. Um, and, and I always invite anybody to, to have one with me. So any, any last words, thoughts from you, Sarah? Uh, I'm just grateful that you've created a platform where you are supporting individuals coming together to discuss certain aspects of, of humanity, of being a human that most people aren't comfortable talking about. And I think that we need these these outlets to really share and connect um, things that are ultimately important to each and every one of us because we're all having this 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 universal human experience. So, thanks for having me on, and I look forward to um, to learning more and sharing more and diving even deeper into pelvic health and some of these other topics that. Uh, most people haven't really even thought about. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to learn here. And I like, I was just, <laughs> we were geeking out on our props. I have all these posters. And <laughs> Anatomy. There's, there's so much more to come. So, so stay tuned. Um, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Okay, that's, that'll be the end of the recording there. <laughs> I feel like I get into this like announcer mode and I'm like, yada, 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 yada. <laughs> cool, what are you saying? How was that? That was perfect. That was like beautiful. We, I think doing the little, the tiny little prep work beforehand was nice because like yeah. it made sense starting with the history, coming into the present, and then you got to show your model, which looks super cool. <sighs> um, <laughs> Um, again, it's so like, even showing like a flat picture versus a 3D picture, like it's so much um, easier for me to understand when it's like actually there in front of you as an object. Which is why like anatomy is such a, anatomy